love the channel and find it useful in becoming a happy retiree. Subscribe today. What's better? What is better? We've been talking about this all morning. Active investing versus passive investing in the swirl of the world that we live in. Listen, we already know the headlines, right? Jobs up 211,000 for April. Unemployment rate down to 4.4%. The underemployment, by the way, rate, which again, closely watched, the U6 went from just under 9% down to 8.6% for the month of April. So, which is getting close to full employment here, by the way, folks. For the, for the headline rate to be 4.4%, unemployment, we're getting pretty darn close to full employment. Wage growth, which is the key. Remember, recessions, if, if you had to watch one economic data point that will, that will flash a red light that says economy is going to slow down, it's going to be wage growth. Because if we get to a point where wage growth gets to be inflationary, it starts to hit earnings. It's, it hits company earnings, which that's when markets start to go the other direction. So wage growth, which is key, at four at two and a half percent. Four, four and a half is the number, is kind of the red zone. So we're safely under that number for now. Uh, so this is the lowest unemployment rate really since May of 07. You could go back even further if you track a chart for unemployment and you can go back to, we, we were we were at 4.4% all the way back in 2001. Labor force participation rate still close to 63%, 62.9 to be exact. We saw jobs in professional services, healthcare, restaurant and bars, and local government. That gets us to the 211,000 new jobs for the month of April. Fed didn't do anything this week. They did not raise rates, but they will likely raise rates in June coming up in the next iteration of, of, of Fed Janet Yellen the soap opera. So there's S&P study uh, and a PIMCO study uh, slash Morningstar that really butt heads. And it goes back to this question about active versus passive management. So the S&P standard poor study is a real advertisement to ditch your active stock funds. And in reality, what it really boils down to is what they're really saying is you got to ditch your high cost active funds. That's really if you boil this down. The PIMCO Morningstar study is a real advertisement to own active bond funds and active bond ETFs and not be passive or not own just the bond index. No wonder the debate's so confusing. There's two total they're saying totally separate things. But also don't confuse a passive fund or an index fund or an ETF. Those are all in the same category with simply becoming a pure passive investor. That's the danger of this whole thing. Don't confuse using a passive fund or an index fund or an ETF, and they're all to some extent in the same category, low cost. They're typically trying to track some sort of index or some sort of methodology like the Standard & Poor's Dividend Achiever Index that we just talked about or ETF. So don't confuse using one of these vehicles with simply being a pure passive investor. Remember, in reality, it, that doesn't really exist because eventually your emotions take over and they, cr and they make you an active investor. It's actually really, it's a rare investor that just fully plows everything into the same broad index forever and ever and ever. In the real world, there's too much emotion involved with that. Too much emotion, emotion involved in money for most people to stay passive completely in the purest sense of the word. So the answer, of course, is like it usually is here on Money Matters, some sort of balance that gives you diversification, asset allocation, participation in a balance that's comfortable with you, that meets the strategy or the period of life, or the stage of life that you're in. We've been just talking this giant debate, active, passive. I think we finally come to a good conclusion here. For some folks, pure passive works, not a lot, 5 to 10%. The rest of us are in some sort of continuum between active some sort of active strategy, varying shades of how active that really gets, really boils down to owning a balance that you can live with, with low cost, both active and passive. They both work. You just don't want to pay and be weighed down by giant fees. And that's a huge part of the equation 
doesn't mean you just own index funds completely because most folks can't quite live with that. So don't confuse passive, a passive fund or a passive index fund or an ETF, which all blend together. Some are slightly more active than others with simply being a pure passive investor. Remember, in reality, it doesn't pure passive for most folks doesn't really exist. It's actually a rare investor that just deals with it because of all the emotion involved. So uh, I want to talk about a couple of different particular ETFs, which I'll highlight that even though they're widely regarded as, oh, that's kind of just a passive thing to do or a passive approach, there's, there's a lot that goes on underneath the hood. Hi, I'm Wes Moss, and thanks for taking a minute to hear about what's so different about my new book, You Can Retire Sooner Than You Think. So unlike other retirement books, this book will give you a step-by-step -step guide, whether you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, to learn from what these successful and happy retirees did to get there. I hope you enjoy the book, but more importantly, I know that it'll help you retire sooner than you think.